Hello, Mishpacha. It's Courtney, American Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm here to introduce this vlog of my booktube prize judging for the nonfiction semifinals round, and I'm judging Group A, which consists of Les and Tamara Payne's biography of Malcolm X, The Dead Are Arising, cast by Isabel Wilkerson, the Address Book by Deirdre Mask. Notes on a Silencing by Lacey Crawford. Our Bodies, Their Battlefields by Christina Lamb. And The Dragons, The Giant, The Women by Y.A. Moore. So I will be reading each of these books and then coming back on here to give you my reactions to them once I have read them. Um, and I have already read Les and Tamara Payne's The Dead Are Rising. Um, I read that for the Octafinals round. Um, so the next clip you see will be me talking about that and about Lacey Crawford's Notes on a Silencing. Hi, so yesterday I finished Notes on a Silencing by Lacey Crawford. This is the, well, it's, I guess it's technically the second of the book two prize books that I've read for the semifinals round because I already read, um, the Dead Are Rising by Les and Tamara Payne, um, which is a biography of Malcolm X. I already read that for the Octopinals, um, and I will link my uh, Octopinals blog down below in case you want to go check out more of my thoughts about that. Um, and I will say a little bit about the Malcolm X bio here before I talk about Lacey Crawford's book. Um, so I ended up giving the Malcolm X bio three and a half stars. I thought it was very well researched. It pulls in a variety of sources um, about Malcolm and different people who were interviewed <clears throat> from various points of his life to construct a full picture of his life. Um, and yeah, and I think if you had a pre-existing interest in Malcolm X, it would be a really good book to read. But I personally really didn't know a ton about Malcolm X going into that book. And I found him as the central figure of that book hard to connect to. Um, so even though I thought that it was a, that it was well done as a biography in terms of giving like a full portrait of this man, again, I, I didn't really connect to it as a reader. And so I ended up giving it three and a half stars. So in terms of Lacey Crawford's memoir, Notes on a Silencing, um, I ended up giving this book three stars. Um, so this is about Lacey Crawford's time at an elite boarding school um, in the Northeast called St. Paul's. Um, and when she is 15, she is sexually assaulted by two 18-year-old senior boys there. Um, and it is essentially covered up by the school. So this originally happened in the early 1990s. And then it gets dragged up again um, sometime around the, the beginnings of the Me Too movement, more or less, in the 2016-2017 era. Um, and basically proceeds to get covered up yet again. <laughs> so... Um, so I think this is an important book to read, um, especially with respect to thinking about institutional culpability in silencing of sexual assault narratives and things like that. My issue with the book is we don't actually get around to the silencing until maybe the last third of the book. Um, we don't really get into that until about page 270 of an almost 400 page book and so while I understand why she gave us a like the assault and then sort of everything that followed leading up to her um, actually telling her parents about the assault um, I understand why that stuff was included but for me there was a lot of extraneous stuff in here that didn't really need to be included, like stuff about who she was dating at various points, and things about friends of hers that really didn't seem all that relevant to her own story, and I would have liked more focus on the actual cover-up part, um, because that was honestly the part of this book that I found most important and most intriguing. Um, so I... It's, it's not an easy book to read. I mean, one, because it is about sexual assault. Um, but two, because for me, it was difficult to read also because 
this is a very like this is a very privileged institution and almost everybody who goes to this school is also very privileged and Lacey Crawford is like doesn't try to really hide that fact but I also don't feel like there's maybe as much interrogation of that privilege as there ought to have been and so it was also difficult for me to read for that reason because it just came across as like sometimes like entitled and out of touch even though I mean obviously like this should not happen to anyone right um, so that is why I ended up giving it three stars because I found it again sort of the the interrogation of the of the privilege lacking a bit and then the actual stuff about the cover-up and the silencing we don't get to until basically about 70 percent of the way through the book so um so three stars i will be curious to see where this ends up falling in the other books that i read for the booktube prize um i will be picking up the address book by jeter mask next so i will come back when i have thoughts about that and we're back. So today I finished the address book, What Street Addresses Reveal About Identity, Race, Wealth, and Power by Deirdre Mask. Um, and this one I think I'm going to end up giving three and a half stars to. I liked it overall, but I felt like sometimes it was a little bit all over the place. Um, every chapter in this book, Mask talks about a different concept and place that is tied somehow to street addresses. Um, so she at the beginning talks about um, Kolkata in India and how people don't have street addresses there and why they so badly want and need to get them. And then she goes on to talk about some origins of street addresses and talks about Rome and London and uh, the United States, etc. And then there's a section on race that also the United States um, comes up in about Confederate name naming practices and South Africa. And then there's a section on um, power that ha that talks about. Um, oh shoot! Uh, let's see. Hang on. Um, oh, politics. So that has to do with Iran and um, Berlin and Nazi street renamings. Um, and then lastly, there's a section on class and status where they talk about um, basically the rich and the poor. So one section is on, one chapter is on Manhattan and the other one is on homelessness. Um, so I thought, I thought the book overall as a whole was good. I didn't think it was difficult to read. It seems very well researched, um, and I think the second half of it honestly is stronger than the first half because within <clears throat> each individual chapter, even though they do tend to focus on a particular place like Rome or London or wherever, um, especially again in the first half of the book, within one chapter she will jump from talking about Rome to talking about Manhattan to talking about London to back to Rome again etc etc and I just didn't understand why she was doing that always um so that was that was part of the reason why I'm not rating it more highly is because again even though I, I did like it overall and I did think it was um it was easy to read and it was well researched is a little too all over the place for me um I did really like the chapter on uh, Nazi street renaming practices, and I also really like the chapter on um, Confederate naming practices in the United States. Um, but again, I think overall the second half of it is more well done than the first half because she stays more focused on the city slash topic at hand in the second half of the book, it seemed to me, than the first half. Um, also, content warning, Donald frickin' Trump. So, in the chapter on Manhattan, she talks about his real estate developer days in the 80s and 90s, and yeah, I wasn't prepared for that, and I didn't want to read about that guy, <laughs> so that didn't have anything to do with my lower star rating, or slightly lower star rating than I probably expected to give this book, just based on everybody's sort of praise and hype for it. That had nothing to do with it, but just if you pick up this book, content warning, Donald freaking Trump's. <laughs> um... So, okay, so, so far in my ratings, it's going to be 
Uh, the Dead Are Rising is currently at the first spot, which I gave three and a half stars to. And then second spot is going to be the address book. Um, and the reason why uh, the Dead Are Rising is currently at, at the first spot for me is because it was way more focused than this book is. And then at the third spot right now is Notes on a Silencing by Lacey Crawford. So the next book I read will be Isabel Wilker Wilkerson's Cast. Um, and I will report back when I have thoughts on that. And we're back. So I finished last night reading Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. So I wanted to come on here and give some thoughts about it while it was still fresh in my mind. So this is going to be an unpopular opinion with this book, I think, but I'm ending up going to give this book three stars. Um, I think for me the main issue is that Isabel Wilkerson tries to do way too much in this book. Um, and that's actually something I, I warn my students against when they write papers. I, I try to warn them against doing too much because what ends up happening is that what you do is you end up covering a lot of topics at a very superficial level rather than covering like a couple of things in depth. Um, and that's exactly what happens in this book because Isabel Wilkerson is basically like, I'm going to explain the entire history of anti-black racism in America and I'm going to explain what happened in the 2016 presidential election and I'm going to do all of that while comparing the caste system in the United States to that of India and Nazi Germany. Like, it's just too much. Um, so that was, that was one issue that I had um, with the book. The other thing is that I have read a lot of anti-racism books at this point. I think over the last two years I've read over 20 books on anti-racism, so it just, she just wasn't telling me a lot of stuff that I didn't already know, quite frankly. Um, and so I feel like I didn't get as much out of this book as I would have wanted. I'm also a little confused about the audience for this book because I feel like by opening the book with a breakdown of the, of the 2016 election in the way that she does, it kind of alienates people who actually really need to read this book and absorb the information that's in it. Because um, I think if you're, you know, if you're conservative leaning, once you read that opening about the election, you're going to be like, well, this is just liberal propaganda, you know? And then you're going to close the book and not read the rest of it, which is, um, which is unfortunate. And, and conversely, I think if you do identify with that stuff about the election, you're probably going to already know some of the stuff that Isabel Wilkerson is saying in here. So again, I'm not really sure who the actual intended audience for it is. So I'm going to give it three stars. Um, I didn't think it was terrible, but I, I do think she's definitely trying to do too much. And I was disappointed that... There wasn't more, I mean, one, in-depth analysis, but also, two, I was, I was disappointed that there wasn't really, like, a lot of stuff in there that I didn't already know. So, I mean, I, I would still recommend it. I probably wouldn't recommend it as a necessarily, like, a starting point if you haven't read, like, any sort of anti-racism book before, although I guess it, it gives a, an overview, but I, I would probably still recommend someone like Ijeo Malua. Um, or Renietta Lodge, or even Robin D'Angelo before I would recommend reading Cast. Um, but you know, that's just my opinion, and like I said, I'm, I'm sure this is going to be an unpopular opinion. But yeah, I just, I just wanted more than the book gave me, so three stars. Um, so the next book I will read for the Booktube Prize will be Y.A. Moore's The Dragons, The Giant, The Women, and I will be back on here when I have thoughts about this. And we're back. So I finished Y.A. Tumor's memoir, The Dragons, the Giant, the Women, a couple of days ago. So I wanted to come on here and make a video before it gets too far <laughs> removed from when I read it. Um, I really liked this. This has been the this has been my favorite book of the round um, that I'm judging so far. Um, so I ended up giving this book four stars. Um, it tells the author's story of a coup in a military coup in Liberia when she was very young that essentially forced her family into hiding and then eventually having to leave Liberia and come to the United States. Um, she also talks about being separated from her mother who while she was um, in Liberia and all of this stuff was going on was um, doing graduate study in the United States. Um, 
and so there's some sort of reflections on a lot of moments in her childhood and things that were happening um, during the coup and while her family was on the move to safety and then there are also some reflections um, from her adulthood um, on kind of like the I, I guess sort of um, long-term consequences that that all of this has had on her um, as well as the move to the United States. Um, so the title uh, she sort of uses um, throughout the book. Um, so the dragon she uses to refer to the military leaders um, of Liberia and then the, the other people who come in and want to, to do this, this coup or this takeover. So those are the dragons. Um, her father is the giant who is sort of able to protect um, herself and her siblings from harm. And then the women, there's one woman in particular who plays a very big role in um, her recollections of what happened in Liberia um, and who is able to um, help them get out. Um, but it also refers to a, a part in here where um, she's talking to someone or her mother's talking to someone and um, the man says that the the Vi women are mighty. Um, so that's where the title comes from. So I really like this. I felt like she does a good, more does a good job at making an emotional connection with the reader which I really value especially in nonfiction. And yeah this is just like a very um, compulsively readable saga of, well not saga, but compulsively readable story of a family and you know you're definitely kind of on the edge of your seat wanting to know what's going to end up happening to them um, and you definitely, you know, your heart sort of breaks for the author um, you know when she's sort of reflecting on why her mother's not there and you know when she's going to see her mother again and etc cetera, etc cetera. and then at one point you get sort of the mother's um, side of the story and um, you know, that's sort of equally as, as heartbreaking. So, um, so yeah, I really like this. Four stars. Would definitely recommend it. Um, and yeah, this has been my favorite book of the Booktube Prize so far. So, I will be back with a last discussion of the final book that I have to read for the Booktube Prize, which is Christina Lamb's um, Our Bodies, Their Battlefield. And so I will give my review of that, and then I will do a wrap-up of all of my rankings for this round. And we're back. So, I finished... Christina Lambs, Our Bodies, Their Battlefields this morning, and oh my gosh, I'm so glad to be done with this book. This is the most brutal book I've ever read in my entire life. I mean, just complete and utter depravity and vile. It's just vile, the things that happen to these women and children. Like, oh my gosh, the worst parts was we're reading about things that happen to children and infants. Infants! Um, oh my gosh, this was this was a very upsetting book. So yeah. Um, anyway, so I ended up giving this book 3.75 stars. Um, it did not quite make it to four stars for me because for me a four star read, like one of the basic qualifications for a four star read for me is that it has to be what I call compulsively readable. So I basically like have to want to keep reading it. Um, and this was like so heavy, like no nobody wants to keep reading this book. <laughs> So, I mean, or, or I would be surprised if anybody was like, yes, I want to read this whole thing straight through. So, um, so I'm ending up giving it 3.75 stars. It'll round up to four on Goodreads. But anyway, um, it's so important, y'all. This is so important to read. I mean, it's it's really rough reading, um, but it's, it's so important. And especially if you're a man, please read this book and please tell other men about it. Um, so Christina Lamb essentially goes and talks to rape victims in a number of different countries around the world. Um, and it's not limited to one region or area. Um, she, you know, goes to Argentina, she goes to Rwanda, she goes to Myanmar, she goes to Bosnia, um, she goes to the Democratic Republic of Congo, she goes to the Philippines, <laughs> she goes to Germany, etc, etc. So it's not limited to um, one particular region, um, but it does all focus on this um, this central idea of women um, and and rape being used as a weapon of war against women um, 
a little bit from, you know, time immemorial or whatever, but especially how, like, it's still going on in contemporary society and how unacceptable that is because we know it's going on in contemporary society and no one is still doing anything about it, or at least... I should say, no one with, like, a, a, a relative amount of power to do anything about it is still not doing anything about it. And so, my impression was that Christina Lamb is, is writing this book to speak to a Western audience, because a Western audience um, is, is the audience who is most likely to then have the relative power to insist that something be done about these horrific, horrific crimes. So... Um, so yeah, so I ended up giving it 3.75 stars. I think people should read this, but it is not an easy read at all. It's very upsetting, <laughs> so yeah. Um, but especially if you're a man, you should read this book, and you should tell other men about it. Um, because just like how, um, if you are a, a person of color in the United States, like let's say you're an African American, and you write a book about how, about racism in the United States, right, like, you're sort of accused of, of, playing into your own self-interests or whatever, and I think similarly, women know about, you know, sexual assault and rape and terrible things that have gone on. I mean, I didn't know about the kinds of things that were going on in here, um, but I mean, certainly, women in this country, the United States, know that sexual assault is still not really taken seriously in this country, um, you know, Exhibit A, right, we have two men on, this, uh, on the U.S. Supreme Court who were, you know, publicly accused of sexual assault and or harassment, and they still got confirmed anyway, <laughs> you know? And yeah, yeah, you can say Harvey Weinstein's in prison, but guess what? Bill Cosby was released not that long ago, and Donald Trump was still elected president even after the grab him by the pussy video. So, yeah. Um... I mean, yeah, okay, fine. It's good that Harvey Weinstein is, is in prison, but, I mean, it's just, it's not enough. It's not nearly enough. And, oh my god, this stuff is horrific, really. <laughs> so, so anyway, my point is, if you are a man, you have a particular obligation to read this book and tell other men about it, because they will listen to you more than they will listen to me. And that's just, that's the, that's the hard, cold truth of it all, so. Um, alright, so I gave this 3.75 stars, done with my, like, excited review of <laughs> this all right, so let's let's do a recap now. So I submitted my ballot today also, and my final rankings ended up being um, that in the first spot, I put Y.E. Two Moore's um, Memoir of the Dragons, the Giant, the Women. I don't actually feel like this one's probably going to move on to the finals round, but it was the one that I personally liked reading the most and enjoyed the most, and I did find this compulsively readable, so I gave it four stars, so this was number one for me. Um, number two was Our Bodies, Their Battlefields. Number three was uh, Les and Tamara Payne's um, biography of Malcolm X, The Dead Are Rising. Number four was The Address Book by Deirdre Mask. Number five was Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. And number six was um, uh, Notes on a Silencing by Lacey Crawford. So um, the Les and Tamara Payne biography of Malcolm X, I gave three and a half stars. The Address Book, I gave three and a half stars. Cast, I gave three stars. And... Um, no Song of Silencing, I also gave three stars. So, um, that's everything. If you have thoughts about any of these books, I would love to hear that. Please feel free to let, let me know that down in the comments below. Thank you for watching this. I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading. And until next time, would it kill you to call your mama?